what uh, you're currently fi finding most exciting about, you know, um, uh, maybe what proof of humanity can be used for? All right. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I think it's I think it's like pretty, pretty exciting. I, I mean, proof of humanity on one side, and then like the the, the universal basic income. I think that's like the the most the most exciting part. I think. Um, and and I don't know, like I think here in Australia, and, and it's it's probably when you see the numbers of like the value that UV has today, it's right. It's kind of it doesn't look like that it's a lot, but when you think about it, and natural maybe in Latin America, I have my family back home. I have my family. They are all very fine, and they're all getting UV. When you see like it's a lot of like money, you know, and it can really improve someone's life. So it would bring a lot of people on board. Like that would be amazing. You know? It's kind of like pretty revolutionary, like the, the whole idea and like being able to make it, it's kind of. Yeah, totally. Uh, I agree. Um, hey, 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 Justin, welcome. Um, we were just going around and saying what we're uh, like most excited um, that like about uh, what proof of humanity could be used for um, in the future. Um, uh, Nacho, do you want to go? Hey, Justin, what's up? What, what's the question again? Remember, oh, yeah. I'm sleepy, um, so I will be. <laughs> I am so we'll the, bad, by the way. <laughs> we're we're going to get the, like dragging my words. We're going to get the truth out of Nacho, whatever he really thinks. He has no filter right now because he's tired. <laughs> um, yeah, like, uh, w what are you excited about being able to use proof of humanity for? Like, what purpose of it do you find exciting? Yeah, I have a vision about proof of humanity in terms of, for example, for UBI to be used to replace or be a, like a robust and, and safe alternative to, to payment methods to, to achieve, to have access to the basic necessity of life. Uh, by mean, I, I mean, by, by this, I mean like uh, the food, uh, shelter, uh, education. So, and also we can, I had this crazy idea the other day or the other month about being, instead of being proof of, proof of stake, proof of work, it will be proof of person, like, uh, but from the proof of humanity registry. So, Maybe you can implant some neural link in, in every people and use it as a node to legitimate transactions. So I was thinking about this a lot. Every time I go to the shower or to bed, I think about this. And the other day, uh, Santi told me that he had the, the same, not the same, same idea, but, but something like that, like making every people in the registry uh, a proof of person instead of proof of work or proof of state. But we don't know if is it technical possible now, because if we make a robust and civil resistance protocol, like we have some gaps now that you guys uh, and more, more intelligent minds like you guys can solve, but I, I think we can make it happen in a, in a, in a, in a mid-term future. Future, I don't know. You guys put some thought about it. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. Doing like a, a proof of personhood, like validation for a decentralized network. It's a really, I haven't yeah. put a lot of thought into that yet, but it's like a really interesting idea. By the way, Justin, you're you just, you're aware you're, you're muted, um, which is cool if you just want to chill and listen, but if we're ignoring you by accident, that's why. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't use Discord that often and didn't know that. Oh, got it. <laughs> well, welcome. Hey, uh, so, you go? welcome everyone. Um, yeah, I, I think also the most interesting part for me is that we will be able to decentralize the UN to the person level. So that's, that's for me very exciting because 
uh, decisions currently are being taken by people that do not know the reality and like this happens into for for every political thing uh, so thinking to the two extremes the un and the municipality like we will be able to take decisions if we take proof of humanity as a registry and and then like associated with other more local metadata that is also protected through privacy with uh, zero knowledge proof um, methodologies or, or systems, uh, we will be able to take decisions on the local level and at the planetary level and, and be sure, making sure that it's all, all, always one human participating. So that's very exciting. And also there is a one problem that is um, one billion plus people around the world with the same problem, that is the lack of an identity and the lack for accessing uh, basic services like healthcare or like a, um, I don't know, social programs just because they do not have a, a, an identity and, and, and we can solve this part by joining our uh, forces or see, making synergies with organizations that are currently working with this and we will be able to provide the technology and this goal is something amazing that is happening because we will be facilitating the registry and, and these organizations is what they need. An easy to use, uh, fast registry and free. And with that, we will help many, many lives. Amazing, amazing vision. Right, Justin, you wanna go? Yeah, sure. Um... Yeah, it's it's not an easy question to answer. I mean, for me, uh, you know, a personhood like digital personhood or decentralized unique personhood, I guess would be more uh, more accurate. Is about it's it, it's really going to be one of the foundations of the new Web three world, right? Like anything, all the things that we envision, you know, whether it's universal basic income, whether it's democracy, even just um, you know uh, the full realization of current things like DeFi. Uh, they all plug into the need of a human-centered, um, you know, uh, a human-centered blockchain, I guess is one way to put it. And, you know, you can't have that without some sort of unique personhood. Um, my passion for proof of humanity specifically is because I believe it's the most transparent, um, you know, um, robust solution that there is to date. I don't think other ones really, really kind of meet that. And um, yeah, I know that that whole answer kind of sounds like a cop out because it's like, it's like everything. My answer is everything. <laughs> but there's just, I think there's so much. I mean, even just superficial things or things that we see as superficial, like, you know, yeah, UBI is great. Democracy is great. These are really important things. But even things like social networks, social media, you know, we take it for granted now and everybody hates it. But like the, the future of the world, part of the problems we have now is because of shitty social media and what it does to people and what, it, and what it's what it's doing to society and like you know um I, I see the humanizing sort of bottom-up type of uh, media approach to that um as important for the future so that was a bit of a it's 7 a.m here having my first cup of coffee so <laughs> <laughs> amazing so it's like the platform, the network, everything, proof of humanity seeping, proof of person seeping into everything and like making it better. Um, yeah, I just don't think you can have the mo like the web that we all envision. Like, you know, I got involved in crypto a, a good 10 years ago. And like, you know, the, the vision that we all have of this decentralized world can't happen without a human centered, you know, a personhood. It just it, it just can't like there's there's too many roadblocks. We've worked around them uh, cleverly, but the times now where we have to um, we have to bring people into it. So. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, hey, Bailey. Um, it's amazing how we have Argentinians that are hard workers and uh, late night <laughs> people. Valid. <laughs> are you there? Hi, guys. How are you? Doing great. Valid. Good, good. Hi, Murdo. Can you hear we're me? Just saying, yeah. yeah, we got you. Yeah. Uh, we were just saying, what's the, what's your, what's your one sentence on 
but your um like the most exciting purpose of like proof of humanity to you like what could be built with it what what jumps to mind I, uh, I was I was wondering, uh, 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 Valen, if you had if you had something some something about it that really excites you. Well, we couldn't hear you, but um. Uh, well, that was exciting, exciting, Valen. <laughs> <laughs> We're joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess if, I, if I'm answering the question myself. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, think... I think Valen is trying to speak, but his mic and or headphones it... are not working. Hi, uh, I have the headphones, and I think that it's not work. I I can't talk about too much. Um, my girlfriend is sleeping right right here, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, what what do you say about uh, I'm excited about what? The uh, what proof of humanity could be used for? Um. Uh, well, I'm I'm not speaking English, but I'm gonna try to 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 understand and can talk with us. Um, yeah. I'm so excited. I'm. I was talking with Umberto uh, on this week, and he have a lot of um, of plans about what we we can do with with proof of humanity, um, with the DAO, with future um, future actions uh, about organization and and I think that it's amazing uh, I discovered this word um, and I can't believe it because uh, I for me it's uh, like a work um, I I when I get up in the morning I say like well, I'm going to Telegram to answer question and stay pending about that and answer question with with Agu, with Umberto, with all the team, and it's like a show. And I'm so excited because I know that this gonna work, and we have a lot of um. I don't know how how I can say. Um, we have a lot. Para decir en español y yo digo le palo en inglés. Herramientas. Tools. Tools. Uh, I have. We have a lot of tools to to make uh, big, big, uh, big things. Um, so nothing more to do. To say, um, we have a lot of work, but. I know that gonna be possible. Amazing. I'm just smiling and while I listen to you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, cool. And then I'll go real quick, and I think that will be all of us. Uh, for me, uh, I've been excited about lately uh, UBI, uh, the way that um, it can be. Um, you know, provide some extra money to people who who need it, um, um, especially in Latin America so far. Um, that I really love to see that, and then also uh, funding of uh, like a quadratic funding, like Gitcoin. I find very like a very exciting application. Cool. There, 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 there are lots, lots yeah. of things uh, that we think as interesting, and that that's very nice because we have variety, and so that we won't be just having a one single agenda. But we are aiming to different things that the combined work will help to to achieve. So that's that's nice. Yeah, and also if 
the team, the founders in the marketplace. Oh, I, I was just about to spoil it, I the name. But it's the team in the marketplace. We, we can't uh, get approval for the incubator by Cleros. We can use the Jitcoin to pay for the people who are collaborating to the marketplace. Awesome, yeah. Umberto, uh, did you have a way you wanted to run uh, the meeting? Um, the agenda that I posted there, but as we don't have a, like a, a formal thing, I think it's, it's very it's nice that it's going like this in an organic flow. Uh, I would just like that maybe if you could give an intro to what has been done and saying uh, also, uh, yeah, say, say the progress up to date, just like quick so that the people that watches us uh, can have that information as context and then we can uh, go through the what do we need to do to, to make this happen and yeah, and invite others. Yeah, great. Uh, I'm happy to screen share if you like. Yeah, please. Well, so I'm just going to uh, share the stock. Uh, can people see the document? Uh, I think so. Of course. Yes. Hi there. So, uh, yeah, so the basic so proof of humanity is off to this amazing start. Um, there's so much momentum around it. Um, and people are finding ways to sign up and register, even though um, it's like pretty hard to register. Like it's really easy to make a mistake. It's very expensive to register. You need a big deposit. Um, you can easily get challenged and then it turns into a mess. Um, you need to be good at using MetaMask. Uh, it's just it's just a it's just a struggle overall, and so um, the hope is that we can make proof of humanity easier to use, and then that would help like everybody you know sign up really quickly, and we can keep the momentum running. Um, so, you know, one possible future is that uh, you know signing up is completely free, that it only takes you know maybe maybe three minutes just in one single session, and then you're registered. And the only thing you really need to know how to do uh, is is use MetaMask, and, and maybe even ultimately we could make it so you don't even have to know how to use MetaMask because that's kind of an advanced thing. Um, and then yeah, um, so that's like maybe where we want to get, so we can include everybody in the world who wants to be a part of this. Um, so inclusion is one really big goal. There's also uh, security, um, you know, making sure that. We offer a lot of civil resistance so that other platforms want to integrate with us, making it so that puppets can't sneak in. Um, and then privacy is another area where we're not doing very well yet. Um, it should be possible to like sign in anonymously with proof of humanity to prove that you're a human, but not which one you are. Um, and these are all things that I think I think we can achieve. Um, and then uh, recently on, on, on my end, just um, this past week, I've been thinking through some of the open questions about how we maybe can achieve uh, these these three things. And so um, just to, uh, to, to run through, um, yes, yeah, so I already described inclusion, but um, yeah, for, for the, you know, we're gonna, we wanna improve proof of humanity from here. We're gonna do some next iteration. The next, next version, you know, it, it's not gonna be perfect, but we hope it could maybe be better. Uh, and so some of the things that might go into that are like, uh, who are we trying to make it work for? Um, uh, people who know how to use MetaMask is sort of one audience that's sort of more power users or people who maybe have a family member who's a power user. Um, or we could be more ambitious and try and make it work for you know pretty much everyone with a phone. Um, and by the way, all of these are, are open questions. And so you know, if people have thoughts on these after or, or, or now, just, just interrupt and just, you know. Um, um, yeah, so who, who's our uh, audience? Excuse me. Oh, go ahead. Uh, th this, this is the question I had the other day that I was thinking I hadn't, and I didn't know who to ask, but people can join and register right now in the using the MetaMask 
uh, from the cell phone, even if they, they don't have a notebook or computer, they can do it uh, with a cell phone only. Oh yeah, so I think last I checked, the mobile UI was kind of broken on a cell phone, ah, okay. like the web UI. But like in principle, that could be made to work. You would you would still have to be like a MetaMask user on your on your phone. You'd have to have MetaMask installed on your phone. Um, like yeah, and, and we could make it work for people who have MetaMask installed on their phone. One even further step we could take at some point is make it so you don't need anything else. You just get like the Proof of Humanity app. And it has it also is a wallet, and so it also manages your secrets. Ah, so it's just okay, like one okay. thing. Would be I think that's further. the approach that yeah. we need to aim for because, like, all these organizations that I said at the beginning, like uh, the basic income earth network that have different networks in in each country, like the India network, uh, they are helping a lot of people in the street, and they require something that is directly the solution, not not go off here and then there and then do this just one thing and that will be amazing yeah that's definitely where we want to end up only question is do we go directly there or do we take a step along the way where we get something out the door quicker that's still a lot better but not perfect yet mm -hmm. yeah that's some so questions that we need to address in those small steps the thing like I think mean, having a, a built-in wallet will definitely be something ideal, but probably something that will take way more time, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're good, yep. if we're good yep. like today, today having MetaMask or having other wallets like allow us to get to a lot of people that are already in the crypto space and and those power users. So what can we do to get them on board faster and, and easier? I think that's yeah, there's but the space people for improvement there. I'm just taking some notes on what everybody's saying. Sorry, did, did somebody else start in? Let's don't stop here. Uh, this is something that will cause some debate and we need to address it as a Sorry, single yeah. thing. Yeah, I, think we're gonna, we're gonna move on. I didn't want to interrupt the... No, it's all good, it's all good. I, I was on. To call in the pensament though. No, that's a good. I, I mean, I, I think that like we so, could get the okay. one. Yeah, and also, I was thinking, uh, some of the, uh, like, it, this is it, this is will be a hard one, but to create a foundation to give every people a cell phone. So if they can register for from a cell phone. Try to make them, uh, for example, with the marketplace, we can divert some uh, earnings from the transactions to a percentage to like a multi sai wallet. And this wallet be used to buy cell phones that could be given to the people that are in the most need and register using the cell phone. That was one idea I had and need to discuss with the team, but, but I think they will agree. That's such an amazing idea. Maybe we can have a program where like some people can donate UBI to the fund so that, uh, to the multi-sig you're talking about. And so that could be maybe one of the options is you could donate like, you know, one cell phone worth of UBI or something or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So that's one open question. Who are we trying to make it work for in this very next version? Another question is like mobile versus web. And by mobile, I mean like a native mobile app that you install from the app store versus like web would be, um, you know, maybe a mobile friendly website that you could also use on desktop. Um, and so for this oh, trade-off. Oh, was the, yeah. Ah, you go? remember, it, I, sorry, yeah. You remember I told you about the Tinder app, mobile app, for <laughs> for proof of humanity. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah I love it. I have, yeah, uh, yeah I, I I I made some research research on that, and I discovered uh, Expo. You know what is Expo? Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, uh, Charlie Cheever made, made Expo. I, I I like Expo. 
It's like yeah, rapid. you can nicer? You, yeah. you can like React Bootstrap something, and with Expo you just use that code and you create a mobile app. So it's pretty easy and seeing the code behind a Tinder mobile web app. And it's pretty neat and easy. Yeah, for sure. If we decide to go the native mobile route, we would totally want to use something like React Native uh, or Expo. Um, like I've built, I've used React yeah. Native really extensively, really extensively in the past, and it's uh, it's 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 great. And there's a there was a time when it wasn't that well adopted by big companies that were really pushing it, but now it's like used very widely at Facebook, even inside like the main Facebook mobile app. It's like a really core part of their stack, and so they're putting a lot of resources into it. Um, but yeah, so, so the question there right. is like, mobile can maybe be a smoother UI UX. You know, mobile web is never quite as good. Um, a disadvantage is it could be like cause centralization because like how do we decentralize like Apple developer account? That could be an issue. Maybe we could make a foundation that's like controlled um... by the DAO or something, but it's like a challenge. Um, we're gonna probably ultimately want um, a web version. Um, and so, like maybe at the beginning here, while the team's small, it's like less work to maintain just one thing. So maybe we should just do web and mobile web and mobile web. Um, yeah, mobile could eventually be good uh, for being more inclusive because we can make it so you don't need MetaMask like we were talking about before. So native mobile, that's only really possible on probably on native, only a good idea probably on native mobile um, to do that. So it could grow into that more easily. Uh, mobile is also probably more secure. Um, yeah, so that's that's sort of an open an open question. Um, anyone anyone have thoughts on what we should do just like for the very next version? I mean, long term, those are the same thing, mobile and web. Yeah. <laughs> I think in the next five to ten years, you'll see them uh, become the same thing. Um, there's already obviously moved towards that with like Apple now doing the M1 and these things. Um, you know, currently, like I think personally, I think mobile's the way to go, at least for yeah. like the main reference yeah. plans. Um, do, it, my main arguments would be, you know, one the type of people, um, you know, uh, most of crypto now takes the approach of desktop only. And that's pretty much the entire ecosystem, right? Like everything from NFTs, like nothing works on a mobile. It only works on desktops. Um, there's a few reasons for this. One is, uh, you know, just cutting edge Web3 wallets and, you know, um, uh, and the technology behind it. But I don't think it works as well for something like Proof of Humanity. And, and the bigger than being like the type of people we're bringing in with things like UBI are the, the same people that don't have necessary access to, you know, the cutting edge latest laptop with, with you know, with Chrome. Um, but mobile phones have a much higher penetration in the world, um, especially, you know, cheaper smartphones, cheaper Android phones. Um, so I feel like yeah. you, you would be much more inclusive if you could target a, a low Android phone than you would if you just stick with Chrome on a desktop. Yeah, yeah, I think the next, I totally agree with you, the next version for sure absolutely should target mobile. It's just, there's partly an implementation detail question of do we do like native mobile or like web mobile yeah i mean yeah for sure <laughs> i mean that's something we could of course have a very long technical talk on uh again i think it's kind of a a weird time in history right now because i also believe most of mobile will move towards web mobile um you know uh progressive web apps i, I think will become a thing in part just because that's where yeah. technology to head in general number and also i think that's where regulations will push things now that they're starting to come down on app stores and monopolies and these things, I think uh, the 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 out for companies like Apple will be making progressive web apps first class citizens on their platforms. Um, so, but right now we're not quite there. A, a, a progressive web app wouldn't wouldn't work just because of things like persistent storage, uh, security, um, those sort of things. But like, so you know, I would recommend personally an approach that is um, you know compiled to native. So if it's real. React Native, Flutter, or something like that. Yeah. Cool. Um, Do you disagree yeah. with that, Ted? Oh no, sorry. Uh, I I wrote it down because I literally don't know the answer. Um, these aren't fake questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, oh, oh um, yeah. I mean, I have lots of lots of thoughts. I think I think um, yeah. Sorry, uh, it's late here, so I'm not. If I didn't acknowledge properly what um, you were saying, those are all great points.
Oh, no, it wasn't about acknowledging. It's just, I mean, it's when I first met Santi um, or re-met Santi uh, over Proof of Humanity, the very first thing I said to him, I could forward the email, was like, the first thing we need to do is get rid of this crappy UI and build it mobile first. <laughs> That's like the first thing I <laughs> I was like, yep. this thing needs to run on a phone. It needs to, it's the, the UI is horrid, the UX is horrid, and we need to get together and put together a team and, and build a mobile app first. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that is where my heart is. Yeah, yeah, I hear you on that. And on my last project, uh, it came in and like the, there, there was really terrible web software that people were using. And like you stood up a new uh, React Native uh, Android and iOS mobile apps translated into English and Spanish in like a two week period and like relaunched it with those and everybody loved it. And so, um, yeah, that's totally, <laughs> totally tempting. Um, cool. Another sort of option is um, layer two now versus layer two later. So like with layer two, we could bring transaction costs way, way down uh, to the point where maybe we can even just subsidize them and have it be like no transaction costs at all. And what that could mean is that somebody could maybe come and start getting, not be, have any crypto at all, never have touched crypto, have no crypto, and come and sign, register on Proof of Humanity and start earning UBI that they can like send around, um, like all without having to like connect to like Coinbase or Cash App or anything, no transaction fees, no like fiat onboarding. Um, so like with L2, I think we might be able to get there. Um, yeah, it's also a lot of work. And so... And the L2 ecosystem is yeah. immature, so it's like hard to make those calls now. Although it's it's a no-brainer this one, we ca we were thinking in the marketplace to make it run uh, in L2. I was talking with with Matt that the CPI uh, app that he developed. I I don't know if you guys are aware of this. He developed an app that it's called a CPI that allows you from if you have um, any crypto ERC token in your wallet you can use CPI and with the PIX code you know the QR QR code you can buy uh, anything in fiat currency and it, it this um, made all the swaps to make it happen but uh, it's not a bad, but uh, it's a, an advantage or a, or a pro that it uh, runs on uh, some kind of L2 rollup or something like that. I don't know if you guys saw the the technical details, but uh, I think it, that L2 is a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, we totally want to end up there. It's another one of those questions of do we do it for the very next version? Or, or do we kind of leave the transaction cost high for now in an effort to get a new version out the door faster? I will say that we need resources and we need a larger team uh, made out of the community so that we can work on these different approaches at the same time, like having the L2 now uh, for with a dedicated working group, having the mobile first with another dedicated group, and so so on. Like we need we need those resources that also Nacho was saying from uh, Gitcoin and from other many more organizations that we can get these resources from. The I don't I don't think the question is more of do we do this uh, or that. It's more that what we want to do, and then we just get the resources and we get the people to that is passionate as us to do it. We just need coordination. Yeah, I totally agree. We yeah, need to and also, that. yeah, and also Matt can help can help us with that. This one. Uh, who's Matt? Uh, Matt Salenk is the Clearos Dev develop guy that oh, always yeah. Yeah, 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 Matt. Cool. save our yeah in the POH debug. Cool, cool, yeah. And then um, another open question is, um, um, so right now there's like a video that you record and send in and uh, a lot of people screw up the video and also it's pretty easy to do like the uh, puppet attack where you just go and pay somebody say like, hey, <laughs> I'm gonna record you. Uh, would you please just like hold up the sign and say, I certify I'm not already in this registry. And then you take that and register as them like stealing their identity. Um, 
And so one, one way we could uh, potentially improve security and maybe user experience at the same time is to, as part of the process, you take your selfie, your photo of yourself, and then you could go on to like a live video interview step where somebody like, it's like a ceremony if somebody swears you in to proof of humanity and you have to like take, you have to like uh, take an oath that like you're not registered already and that you're doing this for yourself and that you understand what proof of humanity is, all, all these things, we can do this like live check. Um, and so, yeah, that's sort of an, an, an option. Um, I don't know, does anybody have thoughts? It's on the brain there. Why do you think it's a no-brainer, Umberto? For security reasons, you just address them, but also like the real-time deepfakes are amazing. You showed me the one the other day, and with this, we can uh, make some questions within the ceremony, and we can uh, also use like empower or employ the community to to participate on on this as auditors of of the process. Yeah, I think this is a very good step because right now you have to use uh no it's it's nacho. <laughs> it's, oh, it's nacho not speaking. Saying, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> his his mic keeps flashing so I can tell. <laughs> uh I think it's a very good step to take because right now when they uh, need for a vouch they go to the vouch uh, telegram group so it it won't take like uh, i was thinking the first thought that came to my mind was oh but it's an extra step and it will like say fatigue the user and say oh, i i won't register but if you do it like this you just get the people out of the vouch group and you can do it automatically like yeah, it yeah. would be very yeah. interesting. That's where, this idea, that's where this idea came from. It's like the community came up with crowd vouching, which was like amazing. And like, hey, maybe let's just build that in. And then and then it gets to be part of it. And like exactly like you're saying, you don't need to go find another Telegram group and like go add yourself to an Excel sheet and like wait days for somebody to contact you. Um, uh, we could just like build it in. Yeah. And so then this, may, this might initially at least take the place of a vouch actually. So you wouldn't need a separate vouch. It's just person who does the video interviews yep. kind of action for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, if I may add, in the original paper, in the uh, 2017 Democracy Earth paper, uh, it says that the, the registry video should include two people saying, yes, I know this person, and these two people appearing on the video. So that's, that's already thought there. And like, like it's I see that like this... What? <laughs> Senga or Umberto who is speaking? No, it's it's me. It's because Senga, I think, it has, I don't know, um, it's <laughs> also appearing everything that everyone says. But it's okay. It doesn't matter who said it. Um, I think everybody sounds like Senga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, 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 the important thing here is that with this live video, as, as you were saying, that uh, we will address all all misunderstandings or all mistakes from the registry because like with a uh, real-time audit then the, the person that is there helping it can say no okay I cannot read the address then you need to put a new one or um, I don't know I cannot see you well like it's more a human thing that that will be more easy to understand because now we have problems with technical people, like three days ago or something like that, uh, a very technical per person um, got it wrong, right? Got challenged. But then we have people that really do not get anything from tech, anything. And that it's like talking to our grandpas or something like that. And then if you just extrapolate this to um, places where the, the life is more difficult, then we just need to, to make it really, really easy and really human where you cannot mess it up. And that's why I believe live video is, is the best approach to Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yep. And, and being able to get feedback in real time where if something goes wrong, both during the live video and you know the person who did the live video can also look at your profile photo, your selfie, make sure that's okay. And so 
if there's an issue, you solve it right then and there, rather than needing to like mm. come back some other time. Um, yes. Yeah, totally. Um, um, cool. And then, and then just uh, the last thing I have, which is just a small sort of technical strategic question, is um, uh, the, the web app for Proof of Humanity right now. Uh, the code is kind of uh, bad, I, I think is the word. Um, the person, I think, who, who originally wrote it sort of isn't, isn't contributing to the project anymore, and so some knowledge about it was lost. And I think just a lot of people who are touching aren't that happy with it. Um, so, um, yeah, so one question is, like, when are we rewriting that? Or, like, just doing the mobile app and, you know, for, kind of forgetting about the current web version, or, you know, how do we want to run that? That's the only other. And, and after that, that, that was last. That was all I had in terms of, like, open questions for that we might need to hit for the next version. What do you mean by technical debt? Oh, sorry, yeah. So technical debt, the idea is that maybe um, you know, the code does what it's supposed to do, um, but the code is like written in a confusing way and written so that it's hard to change without adding bugs. And it's hard to change, it's slow to add things, and it's compli more complicated than it needs to be. And um, the idea is technical debt, it's almost like, you have to do interest payments on it because whenever you make a change, it takes more work and more time, and that's like the interest payment. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, so you mean usually like the, a... correct... the correct pro approach takes time, right? It takes, it's like when software development, right? Like takes time to think about an approach, to refactor, to put it in the right way. Often, as uh, you know, as builders, we decide to take the easy route. But that easy route causes um, what Ted was saying, all of this debt to build up. And over time, it gets to such a level that there's no longer any easy routes. So, <laughs> yeah. Good. And also, also no knocks on the person who got it out the door originally. Like, if they hadn't done that and taken all the shortcuts, like, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So, yeah. Uh, in case whoever you are, I don't actually know you if you're listening. We love you. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all I had in terms of open questions. I just wanted to, you know, thanks everybody for providing some feedback on those. Mm, thanks to you for asking. Me. They You're are welcome, really buddy. well uh, guiding, I think. Uh, Senga, do you want to show any update on the UI UX that you uh, UI that you developed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's not much not much updates from the last time we we showed some of the guys here in the community. Um, just you can just share my screen and, and show quickly what we have. Uh, so I, I think I think it was was really interesting that I I missed this this post from Justin in the in the governance group and I was kind of like thinking on the same things and and then I, I chat with Terry and Terry sent me exactly this. So so yeah, I mean I. I I, and what I was talking also with Tay, I think there's a lot of improvements that we can do from a technology side and an approach side on how to make it like way more scalable and way more easy to to set it up uh, and to register. At the same time, I think that there's like a really, really like low hanging, low hanging fruits in terms of of a lot of the things that Justin says there that I just point out here and, and like how can we make the exact same form without changing anything in the process like way simpler and way faster to onboard. Um, and I think that that would be critical. Like we have Valen here in the call and Nacho, like they are all answering a lot of questions on the on the Telegram. And and even when you have people that they are kind of like, sorry, it's still like a bit clunky the process and, and it's it's prone to errors. And and I think the challenges and, and like the nature of the challenge is to find like fakes or duplicate and not to pick on someone that put the address wrong or that did something wrong. And I think a lot of those errors are like really easy to minimize if we have an easy, an easy and simple interface. So a bit of the, 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 the how the, the, the prototype looked, it was just a, just an easy, an easy way of, of simplifying in, in a wizard way, right? Uh, I like one of the things that Justin said in, in, that, in that post about, about like how, how crypto is it's scary. And I think like that's that's something that it's a bit a bit different different right from when we go from web two designing web three and two and designing web three. Like most of the people that we bring on board and the people that that we want to register, they have a lot of experience on the on the web two and they are they are they, we, they wouldn't be tech savvy, but they are they, they log into Facebook, they're on Twitter. Like they, there's people that they've been on the phones, 
right? And a good thing of Web2 is that you can always go back and nothing happens unless you put a credit card. That would be pretty much the only time where something happens to you. And in Web3, like things stay, right? So you upload something and you lost the deposit or, or whatever. So how can we make it like really easy and really seamless in all the things that are like non-risky, like, like putting your name or stuff like that. And then how can we make it really, really put it up there that what are the risks of submitting a wrong profile and how can you how can we help them minimize that? So I I my idea and, and at least and I, I'm now open guys to your opinions is like I think implementing the UI would be really, really fast. And I think it would bring us a lot of big wins while we work on on bigger and deeper solutions on like maybe the live video or maybe maybe the layer two or the mobile app. I think like changing just the skin and building it a bit simpler will allow us to onboard a lot of people in the next couple of weeks, months, while we can work on better solutions to scale it up in, in on a version three, I would say. But love, that's, I that's love that just, idea so much. I love that idea so much. My, my, my opinion, I think just with UI, we can simply get a lot of like long, low hanging fruits and, and get a lot of people on board while we can it's going to be different when we have a, a way more robust solution with a better process, better better interface, and already a bigger user base. I like it. I think we could probably double or triple the, the number of registers in the next few months. I think like I, I don't have the statistics, but it would be great to have some analytics and know like how many people that go to the website try to log in and how many of those fail. Not that they submit the profile, but they can figure it out and then come to Telegram. I would say that the hassle would be like, I would, wouldn't say that it's more than like 5%, the people that end up on the Telegram channels asking for questions. So I think if we can get all those people to to successfully upload it, like we can scale up this like really, really fast in a like few weeks or months. Yeah, and from the other analytics, see in which stage they have problems. Yeah. So they, yeah. I, I cringe even imagining the funnel analytics where you see the drop off from step to step on the current version. And, 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 and Senga, I love your vision of, hey, like there's this low hanging fruit here. Um, let's go and get this now. And then we can also then be working on, you know, the next version on, on the side. I, I really love that idea. Yeah, and thanks, thanks for that figure. And again, like this is a really basic prototype. I'm not a designer, it's just just I was talking with Seth, like I'm I'm on the on the like I work on a like a software company that we work with like probably the most like non techy old school people that are like chefs and like people in the restaurant business that is like as paper based as you can get. There's like a lot of theories. How can we make it as easy as possible to, to onboard and and I think just like the UI can make us can give us some really quick wins there while we work on deeper things that I guess will take a little bit longer to, to develop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and before I forget, one other low-hanging fruit, just I haven't seen mentioned yet, is if you go to proofofhumanity.id, uh, just as a new user, there's like no obvious call to action for registering. Like the first thing you have to do is like hit like connect or something in the top right. It's like a small button for connecting MetaMask and like then click like submit profile in the middle, which submit profile doesn't show up until you connect your wallet. And so <laughs> we could add in a call to action on the top that just leads into that beautiful flow you made, Senka. Yeah, 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 definitely. I feel like kind of well, when you when you, I don't know, I don't really know how people land into into the app. Is it like from the proof of humanity website that they click on like get started or something? But like just landing on the profile is kind of okay. And what do I do now? Like it's a bit like, like it feels like you're a bit lost. I mean, that was my first experience, and I'm pretty sure like a lot of people went through the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, so the questions will be like, what are the next steps for this? Like, uh, how do we implement this UI that Senga built with the with Justin's and Ted's ideas? I mean, at least from my perspective, I think if we could get like the people that are on that that can collaborate, maybe like fine tune this this prototype. Someone is a designer, put in a format, put in a like in a way that we can implement it and. And implement it. That I think that would be the first the first step. Uh, I don't know from like the proposal process how it would be, but um, 
if we can get like a working group of like a designer that finalizes this and like a, a developer that can implement it. I think um, I think the big the the first step that we're gonna have to uh, um, come to as a DAO is whether we're gonna build this from scratch from as as you know a completely new um, you know new code base, or whether we're gonna continue to try to retrofit uh, improvements into the existing. Um, I think that'll be the the most important first decision, and then from there to kind of uh, to kind of build on that. It's possible to take both decisions in this case where like retrofit a limited number of like superficial UI changes like the one Senga designed into the existing thing and then also, you know, sort of continue developing a, a you know, the version with lower transaction fees and all those other all that other good stuff. Um, um, and, and in terms of um, um, I'm just yeah, I just wanted to, to just point out, we, we do have the option of doing both like Senga was saying um, and then and then one other thing, um, uh, Senga, I'm sure like a, des a, a designer, like you mentioned, you're a product person and not a designer. And I'm sure a designer could make some improvements. But I think I think you're not giving yourself enough enough credit on the design front. I think it's really simple. Yeah. It's really solid. Um, it's like clear what to do next. Um, you know, I'm sure we could make you know some tweaks ourselves if we put a little bit more time into it. And uh, I, I I don't know. I, I I I would hate to add too many steps between now and it you know being launched. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so thanks, okay. thanks for that. I mean, I, I, I know that I, some, some guys reached out to me already that I know that they're designers, so I'm pretty sure they could trick it, especially on like, not, not on like the design, how it looks, but more like how we, how can we make it easy to like implement like the CSS and like kind of the more like the, the, the implementation rather than the design. I think it's really basic, so I wouldn't, I don't know if there's much like to change in terms of like content and, and, and different elements and assets, but more like how we make it VC for like the, the developer that's going to be holding it like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. In terms of the developer to work on it, like Umberto was saying, it's it's pretty hard to do develop to, to do two things at once. So I guess like an option would be like do it serially, make these improvements, launch those, then start working on the, you know, even better version. Another option would be maybe we can get uh, some of the Claros folks like uh, Matthias on, on the Claros team, who I think is working full time on uh, Proof of Humanity stuff. Maybe he would be up for, um, you know, working with Senga to get some of those things implemented uh, while other people kind of work on, you know, uh, a, a, an even better version. Just throwing ideas out. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's, that's a good idea. I'm, I kind of, I mean, I, I registered in Proof of Humanity a few months ago, but I kind of knew to like the, the development side and like the, the community and contribution side. So I don't really know what's the process to, I'm happy like to, to, to jump on it and like w work with a designer or developer like to make it happen. But I don't know which are like the, the process and the steps to. to yeah, I think, I think nobody knows what the process and the steps are. It's all being defined as we speak. So <laughs> it's a huge adventure. Yeah. What if we break it down like, um like yeah like a product like saying yes we need specifically a designer <clears throat> sorry a designer for this a developer of this kind for that and and then we need these deliverables and we need them for i don't know by two months or something like that uh or less if it's possible um and put it as a heap and it will start in the discussion and we will attract more people and we can put it like immediately in English and Spanish, so that we can uh, leverage the community from two the two languages, the two sites, and we can start doing it right now instead of like finishing from our site and then presenting it. I don't know what do you say about that. I mean that's a good idea. I can if you want, we can we can like write down like one of which other the deliverables and. And what would we need? And just like write down that the proposal of the heap and get it rolling. Yeah. Great. I think that that's what we need to do, and and that will be for every other thing that also Ted said. Like we need to address them as as products. We need to, uh, yeah, leverage or, or call the community to to contribute because there are a lot of people saying. Hey, how can I contribute? But these people do not have the time to be on the Telegram groups, on Discord, like reading everything, getting updated. They just want to know how they can 
put their skills to, to contribute. And if we just uh, make a, a call with bounties, for example, that we need a CSS uh, front end designer that can do specifically these three deliverables, then we will get them, I'm sure. And like we have Gitcoin and Gitcoin already accepts UBI so that we can put the heap to, to work uh, with all the Gitcoin developers. And like, I don't, I don't think we have an obstacle of resources, not of talent. What we need is just to put them to, to, to the forum, to the discourse and into Web3 uh, availability so that people can, can come and we can do it. And the, and the other thing is what Justin was saying about, yeah, with, where do we do this? Do we do it on the, yeah, on the official uh, page UI? We need to address this as a, as a political thing with, with the founders, uh, with the board. And I'm glad also that Justin has been elected. Well, it will last one week, but I'm sure it will be. Um, so that we can address this on the, on the board that we need to decentralize the UI so that we can all contribute to it. Yeah, it would be, it would be amazing to have uh, to the extent that the community is the one, you know, uh, defining and building the product. It very much makes it like theirs. Um, and so I uh, love the idea of, uh, you know, uh, bounties for things like design and design work, especially for things that, you know, like design where you can kind of pop in and do it and pop out. Um, for some of the harder core engineering, we probably will another need uh, ultimately a team of like people working on it uh, uh, full-time um, just because of the way software engineering works. Um, but uh, Umberto, if, if anybody comes to you that has serious like software engineering skills, please do, you know, uh, you know, send them over to, to me or Justin or something so we can see if we can involve them. Sure, I will. Perfect, perfect. So as, as next steps, um, should we start with our proposal then, Umberto, like how if we can and with Justin now and hopefully on the board, and then how we want to put, like follow like with the decentralizing the UI, and then if that gets approved, we'll get to we'll move to writing like the deliverables and finding the the people to start working on it. I will say that there will be two proposals. One is decentralizing the UI because that will take its own time and yep. its own in its own things. But then we, we can do two proposals, the one for the UI that you have and so that we can address it as a, as a project and as resources. And, and at the same time, we, we put the other one that we need to decentralize the UI so that we can advance and not get uh, obstacles with political things. Because it will take time, you know, like it will take, I don't know, three, five days for discussions or one week. And then we need, need to be updated into the phase two and it will take another three to five days. And then it will take one week more. So we need to put pressure on this. Sounds good. Sounds good. So cool. how, do you, how, how do you want to do it? Do you want to take, take care of the first one of the UI decentralization? I can work with Terry maybe on like building up like which are the deliverables for that this part and what would we need from like a design technical side and start building the second proposal. You want to do it that way? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Also with Ted, I have been, we have been talking about the, this UI decentralization and I don't know, Ted, do you want to explain the ENS uh, solution? Oh yeah. So. So one thing, just because we want uh, proof of humanity ultimately to be as decentralized as possible, um, one option for that is um, I think this. I'm trying to think. Um, this wasn't this wasn't originally my idea. Um, I forget. But anyway, um, if we start using um, uh, ENS uh, Ethereum name service, which has like you know like proof of humanity ETH for example, um, there's a service called uh, ETH link, which will make it so you could go to like proof of humanity.eth.link and that would be the actual website. And that could be controlled like by the DAO or by a community um, or by some multi-sig of trusted members or something. Um, and so it would just be an increase in decentralization compared to sort of a centralized um, you know, um, .id domain name. Um, so that's sort of an, an option for a way to for the community to take more ownership. Um, and then ultimately the plan for, for ENS, the 
is to um it's going to be a top level uh, registrar uh, top le a t top level domain in itself so that um people could just go directly to you know proof of humanity dot you know uh, dot eth or whatever without the dot link anymore so there, there's sort of a pathway towards that happening Yeah, so we can we can work on that part, and maybe Justin will be also interested on on working on like um, polishing the proposal, so that we can we can have it a, a a better proposal, so that everyone gets in and we have the community. For sure. Great. Okay. okay. So we have two things happening. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Justin. I'm sorry. I was just saying I, I apologize. I, I have to go. Um, I, you know, I'll, this is a weekly thing now, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll definitely be here every week, and I'm always open for contact from everybody. I apologize when occasionally it takes me, you know, a day or two to get back. Uh, it's not because I don't care. It's just because I, I get overwhelmed. I, I work full time during the week. So, uh, I look forward to continuing the conversation and, and working with all of you. Thanks for uh, everything you've done. Uh, the future looks super exciting for me. <laughs> Yay. Thanks yeah. for being here. Right, guys, ciao. Thank, thank ciao. you, Justin. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys. So so we have two two main things that we are taking away from, from this conversation. And one is that the, the decentralization uh, proposal, the other is the implementing the UI that Senga already uh, designed. Um, and those are the, the main things that we are going to work this week. And I hope that maybe at, you know, for the next week we can have something already on, on this course so that we can start uh, leveraging the community and we can start having also um, yeah, promoting this in both languages so that we can get more, more people in. And another thing that I wanted to, to add to this is that we need to start cross, uh, cross department or cross areas working together. That was the idea of, of Discord, the original idea, to get people from different uh, scopes of work to communicate and do not lose on what the other one is doing. And on this on this side, uh, we need to also have a, a fundraising area so that we do not depend on only the resources that we have so that we don't have this no of saying, oh, no, 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 the resources that we have are for uh, employing and not for kickstarting projects, for example. So that we need to take away all possible negative answers and that we don't have any obstacle for resources. And because getting resources is, is pretty easy, but it takes time. That's, that's the issue, it takes time. So um, I will also um, work on a proposal and, and, and uh, share it with you uh, about this fundraising area, because it won't require too much resource, original resource, but it will get us a lot of money to, yeah, to, to get the community in for all the things that we want to do and like, what Ted uh, showed today, we need, we need several groups and we need a coordination group that coordinates all these areas to, to work together. And, and I see this something as we need them now. And the idea is that we will become manager less in the medium future, maybe, uh, maybe short future so that we can completely work as a down. We don't require any more um, yeah, cross coordination because we, we can have a, a very good, uh, very well uh, uh, communication. But yeah, now we need this. So Perfect. yeah, what are you saying? Great. I, 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 like, yeah, I like your idea. Amazing. I like your idea. I need to jump out guys, but yeah. uh, I'll start, I'll write a bit of like the scope of work for implementing this, like my side, uh, and I'll run it through you guys if you have any comments or ideas. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Senga. Senga, thank you. Okay. Great. I have to go. Great right, to have a chat with you. Bye bye, guys. Bye. But, bye. Uh, Umberto, I love the I love the um decentralizing bye. the uh grants and money. That's a great idea. Uh just excited about that. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Que descanses, Valen. Okay.
Hasta luego, que tengas buenas noches. Buenas noches. Bueno, buen día. <risa> Gracias.